Yo, this is episode 16 and today you've got me, just me. I uh, I don't have a guest today. I wanted to post a video about how I healed my cavities. And this is something that I've been wanting to put out for a while, but I've been quite fortunate to have quite a lot of guests in the um in the lineup, so I decided to take a, a week off from interviewing people and I thought, you know what, now's the time. I'm going to piece this together, put it out there and see how we get on. Um, just a bit of a backstory. So this is something I've actually been working on for a long time, probably about 10 years. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've gone back over information multiple times. I've found stuff that I didn't trust and then I found myself in a position where I felt do you know what I'm just going to go back and give it a go it doesn't make a lot of sense to me but let's give it a go and see how we get on and I can happily report that a few years ago it's probably about four maybe five years ago I reversed two small cavities so these are in the enamel very small ones that the dentist has said look i don't think we should fill now but i'm going to keep an eye on these and we're gonna you know come back in in six to 12 months we'll have a look we'll see how we get on but they may potentially need filling so i've gone away i've used quite a lot of this information i'm about to present not all of it because i didn't have all of it back then i just used what i thought i knew and I've gone back to the dentist and I asked how they... Basically, I had a checkup and he said, yeah, everything's fine. So I said, what about the two? And he said, what two? Right? And I've had to show the old x-ray. We've gone through the old x-ray. He goes, ah, oh, oh, no, no, that gone. So I was like, wow. Okay, so this stuff works. But recently, I actually had a checkup. This was about just over a year ago. Because I didn't go to the dentist over the whole COVID thing. I weren't wearing a mask. I wasn't doing any of it. And I said, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going. My teeth were perfect before. But during COVID and all that time, I definitely slacked on the diet. I probably drank a little bit too much. And I went to the dentist and he said, you've got two new cavities. One of them's small. Again. The other one's actually in a filling that I had years ago. And it was behind the filling. So this was, this was in the dentin. And he said, look, I'd get that filled. Don't mess around, get it filled. Because if it gets any worse, you might end up in a situation. So I've basically said, look, I need six months. Let me come back. And I went away and I was religious on all the stuff I'm about to present. And I went back and I had, well, actually, I went to another dentist. I went to a holistic dentist this time. And I really like had a proper conversation with him about loads of stuff that I'm going to talk about again as well. And um, I basically had the x-ray and I sent it back to my original dentist and I asked for a call. I sent it to the office and I asked for a call from the dentist and he gave me a call and he was like, basically, I've never seen this before and whatever you're doing, carry on. And he didn't feel the need to go for any more treatment. So I explained the situation and he was you know, he's quite impressed, but not really a believer in this kind of stuff. Because when I actually said, give me six months, and I tried to, you know, spit all my lyrics about what I think I know. And he basically said, all right, mate, crack on and uh, keep an eye on it. I'll see you back. So, yeah, that was um, that was mental. And I basically said to him, what do I do from here? And he said, yeah, carry on and... Um, Keep an eye on it, but it's definitely like remineralizing and it's definitely like, you know, I think you've reversed it basically. So that was about six months ago. I've carried on with a diet and yeah, I'm going to go back soon again for another checkup. But I went to another dentist recently um, for, an, for Invisalign and I showed them the x-ray and she confirmed again that I've reversed a cavity and I actually sent it to a guy on Twitter who is a holistic dentist and he's confirmed it as well. So that's three confirmations now. 
So I know this stuff works and I'm gonna present it to you the best that I can. Bear in mind, this is not medical advice, of course. I am not a dentist. I'm just somebody who has had issues in the past, which I can explain why I think that is. And I've managed to piece this all together and um, yeah, improve every aspect of my oral health. My, um, my gums, I had receding gums when I was about 25, 26. I had bleeding gums always, my whole life, I've always had bleeding gums. Every time I floss, it bleeds. My gums now are perfect. You know when they do the, where when they do a checkup, they talk about your gums, you've got from zero to four. Zero is perfect, four is obviously, you know, your gums are in a bit of a mess. And I remember I went years ago and they were like, you know, as they read it out to the dental nurse, you know, whatever side, three, this, around this bit's four, oh, this bit's four, this bit's four. And as they're prodding, I'm, I'm bleeding. And when I went for the invisible, as Invisalign checkup, which was like two weeks ago, she's like zero, zero, two round the front, which most people have, zero, zero. She's like, your teeth are very clean, right? So I don't have barely any tartar buildup. And she said, your gums are perfect. So you're talking someone that had, I reckon if I didn't change, I was on the path to, you know, big problems. And I will explain now why I uh, think that is, actually I'll explain that in a little while as we get into the video, why I think that's the case. But it's not eating loads of sugar and not brushing my teeth. So just to give that away. So we're gonna start by looking into what a cavity looks like and what causes cavities. So you've got obviously different stages. The first stage, which a lot of dentists actually jump the gun on, which is like a gray shade in an x-ray. They There's a test that they can do um, where they sort of poke into it to see if it's sticky. And most dentists, most dentists just sort of see the x-ray and go, oh yeah, you've got filling, you know, you've got a, a cavity, we're gonna, we're gonna fill it. But if it's surface level and it's in the enamel, you're best off taking your time, right? So if you get this, if you go to the dentist and they say this, I would say, look, I'm gonna come back in six months or even 12 and I'm going to focus on my health and my diet and we'll have a look again and we'll see where we are. If it's got worse, if it's gone, you know, or if it's the same or whatever. And what you often find is your teeth will demineralize and remineralize all the time. So you might have gone to the dentist in a period where you're a bit run down, your diet's not been great, you've been on holiday, you've been drinking more than you should, or whatever it might be, and they've caught you at a bad time. And you could go away and do nothing, and that could fix itself up and not be an issue at all. So one of the problems I had, and this is what got me into this topic, is, well, firstly, as a kid, I was the third child. So I didn't get the bulk of the minerals. So that's number one. So my frame is naturally a bit smaller than my older sister and my older brother. My older brother got the bulk. He's a lot bigger than I am. Just his like natural frame. And his teeth are better. And I wasn't breastfed. So these are two massive factors from a very early age, which are out of my control, that essentially kind of weaken your constitution. So I was up against it anyway. And as a kid, I had a couple of cavities. I had a tooth that was removed uh, when I was young because I, I actually broke the tooth and it got infected and it, it was removed. And I had um, another filling at a young age. It was a mercury filling, which I then learned the horrors of, of mercury all these years later. But yeah, I had a mercury filling as a kid. And when I was about 24, 24, 25, I started to get into like looking at vegetarianism and veganism and all of this. And I used to do a lot of juicing and I was banging out these juices all the time, loads of them. And I went to the dentist for a checkup. I haven't been in a couple of years. And she's like, you've got five cavities. So I'm like, wow. Okay. And she's like, basically, you know, bent my arm and I ended up getting fillings. And I've looked back years later. I'm like, 
I didn't need any of that work. Maybe one. Maybe one out of the five. So I've gone and got five. Years later, one of the fillings that she's done has now got now had the cavity behind it. So I'm like, great job there. And the other one, well, another one of them, the fucking tooth broke. So that, then I started questioning more, like, why? Why me? Like, what's going on? I eat healthy. I, I look after myself, you know, after myself. I floss, I brush, I do all this kind of stuff. And that's when I come across Remil Nagel and Western A. Price and all of this stuff. So I'll get into that in a little while. Um, a lot of what I'm going to teach now, especially from a diet perspective, comes from Remil Nagel. And I've then spent years looking into other people and then I go back to him and then I look at others and I go back to him again and I've just about tried everything and um, yeah it led me to what I've recently done and the conversation I had with the holistic dentist is she's the same as me she's like look it just is what it is some people just you know get cavities and what you find is, and I'll go into this, but the demineralization and the remineralization of the bones, the body will prioritize different, like, bones on different people. So you might end up with loads of cavities, whereas someone else might end up with none. Like, I've got friends who eat shit, drink all the time, don't care, and they've never had a cavity in their life. They're in their 30s now. But what she was saying to me is these are the type of people that when they hit their 40s or 50s, they end up with like osteoporosis or arthritis because the body will steal calcium from the bones. It's just what bone. So if anything, you're probably luckier if it's the teeth because you can actually monitor that and you can keep an eye on it and you can learn how to fix it. And if you are low in calcium, if you go to the doctors, they'll be like, well, if you go to the dentist, they'll be like, take more fluoride, which is ter a terrible idea. And the doctor will say, take more calcium. But the problem isn't the calcium levels that you have going in. It's the calcium that's actually going into the bones and doing what it should be doing. So you can take calcium and then you can end up with free calcium, which can cause horrendous health effects. It can cause things like cysts, kidney stones like you know arthritis like we said it can cause blockage of arteries heart attacks it could be a horrendous situation so you have to focus on the other aspects which is essentially all the minerals that kind of build the bone matrix and they act as like uh the you know like the master minerals that send signals to the body to put the minerals where they should be so we'll go into it, but that's the, uh, the, the intro of, you know, my presentation. And uh, yeah, let's see how we go. Right, so we're going to start part one with the conventional theory of what causes cavities. So when you go to the dentist, this is probably what they're going to tell you. So the acids from bacteria remove minerals from your tooth's hard outer layer, uh, which is the enamel. Uh, this erosion causes tiny openings and holes in the enamel. The first stage of cav which is the first stage of cavities. Um, once areas of enamels are worn away, the bacteria and acid can reach the next layer of your teeth called dentin. So if you remember the first um, thing I said about a cavity I had recently was in the dentin. So that's obviously, it's gone through the enamel and it went through the enamel because I had a fill in because they drilled the enamel away. So, and the dentist actually said to me, very rarely do the fillings actually give in. It's normally the tooth around the filling. And I'm thinking, oh, how convenient. Brilliant. So anyway, moving on. So Streptococcus mutans are the main cause of dental decay. Various lactobacilli are associated with progression of the lesion. So this bacteria, this makes me laugh. So <laughs> this bacteria's poop sits on the teeth. And because it's acidic, it starts to eat away at your healthy tooth structure. Over time, the bacteria produce more and more acid and the cavity starts to grow. So essentially, you've got this bacteria that is pooing on your tooth. <laughs> and the poo is acidic and it becomes like a cesspit of bacteria, Streptococcus mutans, and it's poo and acid. And that's essentially what apparently causes cavities. 
So I thought or I felt like I was being bullshitted when I was told that. And it didn't make any sense to me because I brushed my teeth, I did everything. I used mouthwash, I used a whole lot. And I kept having issues, yeah. And I could directly see that it was related to my diet. And I'm not believing necessarily that it was the sugar sticking to my teeth. I was starting to think, is it the sugar that's affecting my blood sugar level? So, so this is when I got into Western A Price. And so a little bit about Western A Price. So Western A Price analysed the diet of the isolated indigenous people. So he travelled around the world and he stayed with, I think it was 12, I can't remember the number, but loads of different indigenous people living in remote locations. And he discovered that they provided at least four times the amount of calcium and other important minerals that the Western modern population was eating. And this was back in the early 1900s. So imagine how bad it is now. So... Uh, yeah, and and at least 10 times the amount of fat-soluble vitamins from animal sources such as butter, fish, eggs, shellfish, internal organs, and meat. Obviously, back then, everything would have been organic, and the way that they preserved foods was different, and the way that they, you know, they removed certain factors of their food, like instead of just bread that's processed like the stuff we get from the supermarket full of sugars and all of this kind of stuff and whitening agents and stuff. They use sourdough bread and all the sourdough bread. So they fermented the seeds, uh, basically. And then all the bread that they ate, they normally had it with some sort of fat, you know. And the diet was completely different to what we're eating now. And I changed my diet and followed predominantly the Western A. Price diet, um, which I'll get into. So he noticed that most of these populations didn't have any cavities at all. And most, if not all, didn't even brush their teeth. So they weren't using lycerine, mouthwash, and fluoridated toothpaste, and flossing. And these guys had, these guys had better teeth than probably most people in the modern world. And he was like scraping gunk from their teeth, like green gunk from their teeth. And underneath there was no cavities. So that really gets you thinking about this whole bacteria pooping on the teeth situation. So where do I stand? Well, I've probably made it quite clear, but what I believe is that a bad diet weakens the teeth and the bones and can make you susceptible to cavities. Streptococcus mutans and uh, other bacteria create cavities or they're found present when you have a demineralization in the tooth enamel and there's a cavity and an acidic environment can be a huge issue if your diet isn't perfect so if you aren't eating right and you are lacking all of these fat soluble vitamins and minerals etc and you have poor like dental hygiene and acidic environment then I think it's a big problem if you're not eating right the least you could do is focus on trying to kill the bacteria and making your mouth more alkaline. And that I go into how to do that, or at least how I do that. I do both. So I focus on the diet and I focus on this. Um, it's hard to have a perfect diet in the modern world. So applying all of the below for full uh, protection. So... Everything I'm going to go into, basically, I just do a well-rounded approach just to be on top of things. And it helped me because clearly I had a cavity, so I did have the Streptococcus mutans, so I've managed to get rid of them and also clean it up and healed it from the inside. One of the cavities was actually, like I said, behind the filling. So I didn't heal that externally to internally. I healed that internally to externally. But I did put a lot of the things that I'm about to talk about around that tooth as well, in between the two teeth. Um, so we want to get the right minerals in our diet, which is a consequence, uh, as a consequence, um, remineralizes our saliva, helping to remineralize our teeth topically, as well as from the inside out. Uh, also, the absolute minimum 
here is to avoid or limit the things that pull calcium from the bone, which we'll get into. Sugar, seed oils, stress, EMFs, um, through the calcium channel. So when you look into the negative effects of EMFs, they'll always talk about, oh, it doesn't you know, penetrate the skin or the cell or whatever. But there's a thing called the calcium channel. And essentially it pulls calcium from the calcium channel. And that is what can cause issues. So living in a massively radiated area can actually pull minerals from the bone as well. Calcium from the bone as well. So that's a huge factor. And we'll talk about what to do to mitigate that as well. And then I also put solders because I'm American. Uh, anything fizzy. Obviously, sugary fizzy drinks is is a big no-no. I, I was saying to someone recently, I haven't had a can of Coke in years. Probably like six years. I just can't think... I'm not a child. I can't think of anything weirder. Like, <laughs> why? And I used to like sparkling water, but I've had to knock that on the head as well because it has a similar effect. Right, so... What would I do? If I was in that situation, which I was... What would I do? So first thing I'd do is clean up the diet. Or your diet. Or my diet. This can show positive results quickly. Definitely. Absolutely. It can show effects quickly. Ramel Nagel talks about people who essentially need a root canal. By doing a week or two of a very clean diet. You can eliminate the pain. I mean. That's crazy. So first thing is diet. I'd also clean your mouth properly using different oils. Uh, we'll get into these in more detail shortly, so we'll go into that. So we're going to start on the diet no-nos. So the things that I cut out, the things that I avoid, absolutely. I might have once a week, maybe even twice a week. I don't do cheat days because you'll demineralize massively on those days. But I might do a cheap meal. So on the weekend, I might go out for breakfast or I might get a takeaway one day or maybe one day I've fucked up my lunch for work I've left it at home or I've done something wrong I don't know and I'll go out and I'll grab something or we'll go out and eat one time but generally speaking one maximum two a week everything else is what I'll put into the things that you want to do so processed foods are a big fat no seed oils here's a few not all of them corn oil rapeseed oil sunflower oil peanut oil uh, soybean oil, cottonseed oil, I don't even know what that is, but don't eat it. They degrade the human bone density. So these are oils that are actively pulling calcium out of your bones. So you want to avoid them as best you can. They also completely wreak havoc on the gut. I didn't do a slide on this, but we'll get into this. I'll drop a bit as, as we go. But if your gut isn't working properly, if you're not absorbing minerals properly, it's going to be a problem. If you're shitting out minerals because you constantly got the shits because you're eating seed oils and they're wrecking your gut you're not digesting them properly so you need to get them out ideally cut back on non-organic food so things with pesticides non-organic most stuff that you buy from the supermarket unfortunately we normally try to go to the farm shops or the butchers and i try to get the cleanest that i can i spent ages months and months and months trying to figure all things out looking at different ingredients, reading reviews on different supermarkets. You know, I go to one shop, I buy steaks, I'll look into the farm that they come from. It's long, but I did it. And I like knowing I'm safe, really, and I'm covered. I don't want to be eating something for three years and then find out, oh, it's genetically modified this whole time. So yeah, I'll generally try and go around the, um, the, the farmer shops the butchers, you, the green grocers, you normally find it's cheaper. Believe it or not, it is actually cheaper. It's really, really hard to get hold of organic food. They're making it harder and harder. But at the very least, get local. Because then you know it's got more mineral content. It's not travelled all the way around the world. Barbara up the road on her local farm or a little allotment is growing it and you're buying it straight from her. Yes, yeah, she sprays it with something. She doesn't know what it is. But what am I going to do? I'm going to do my best. That's what I'm going to do. So... That's what we do. Um, sugar, get rid of sugar the best you can. And I would even say, if you have cavities, get rid of fruit. Com eliminate fruit completely and also raw honey. I know everyone talks about raw honey. I had raw honey. I used to have it all the time. I loved it. Someone like me, 
with the way that my body likes to distribute calcium, I'm not very good with sugar. So I'm eliminating nearly all sugar, personally. There's loads of different arguments on this. Personally, I, I try and do my best and I feel pretty good without it. So it's my own personal situation. And, and a lot of this will be your own personal situation. You might have been breastfed and your issue is you went vegetarian for four years. So then you've got a different situation than I had. I did go vegetarian, but it was about six months. But my situation, I didn't have the constitution. So I've got to be on top of this probably for the rest of my life. And it's a trade-off I'm willing to make because I like my teeth and I want to keep them. Some people might fix a cavity, go back to their old ways, and it never comes back. So this is all an individual thing. You might have something like IBS or colitis. You need to fix that. Because you can't... I don't think you could do what I'm telling you and, and have a full recovery whilst everything you eat, you're shitting out. I, I just don't think it will work. So I think that's something you have to focus on. So we will have our individual situation. You need to look into that yourself and you need to figure that out. And ultimately, it's about what vitamins and minerals you are absolutely actually absorbing. And this is why, you know, a lot of vegans will talk about, oh, calcium has... Uh, like spinach has this much calcium. Yeah, but it's wrapped up in oxalates and you're not digesting it as well as if it was raw milk. So you have to look into these things and it's about making sure that your body is digesting those minerals. And then also, you want to ensure that your body is having the right signals to do the right thing with those minerals. Um, I didn't do a slide on this, but I'm going to quickly say it now. Uh, cell salts. I use loads of cell salts. I can't remember the ones. Calc floor was one of them. It, it's like a, homeopath, a homeopathic um, remedy, essentially, which helps energetically, because, you know, we're electrical beings. It energetically sends signals for my body to utilise the calcium. And you can buy different ones with phosphorus, ones with, uh, you know, magnesium, different minerals. So... That's what I did, and it helped. So I'd look into that as well. You need to ensure that your body knows what it's doing with the calcium and stop eating foods that are taking the calcium out. So bread and less sourdough, which we spoke about. Cut back on fruit, just said that. Phytic acid, so you're looking at nuts, legumes, uh, seeds, whole grains. I don't eat any of them. I'll have sourdough bread a couple of times a week. Sometimes not once, sometimes three times. I love it. I, I love sourdough bread, and I'll have it with like raw brie, or whatever. Coffee, tea, they're full of tannins. Um, I still drink coffee. I drink it with raw milk. So I'm trying to do my best. Sometimes I put a bit of pearl powder in it. And as soon as I finish drinking my coffee, I'll go into this, but I'll do my little remineralization thing. So bear that in mind as well. Um, oxalates, personally, I lowered but didn't cut out. So if there's oxalates in things like tea and coffee. Um, Leafy greens, I've started adding, having more leafy greens. Um, not all the time, a couple of times a week. Potatoes we have a lot of. I'm white and English. Potatoes are the one for us. <laughs> it's like telling some Chinese dude, you can't eat rice, man. it would be like, nah. So potatoes, I tried to make them the best way that I can so they're you know, digestible. And I use them as a means to get more of the minerals that I want. So... I cook them in animal fats. We boil them, we let them cool down. So that helps with the spike of the glycemic index, so your sugar spike. So we let them cool down first and we cook them again for our dinner. We do the same with rice, but we soak rice for 24 hours and then we'll boil it and then we'll put it in the fridge and then we'll use it when we need it. But when I use rice, I'll have loads of fat and oils in it and you know loads of meat and stuff, so... It just helps as a way to eat more of the foods that I want to eat without, you know, fucking worrying too much. So, so yeah, we um, that's what we do. Uh, fizzy drinks, uh, low-fat foods, I, everything's full fat. Uh, like I said, it has to be the best quality, though. You don't want to go to Asda or Iceland and eat all the full-fat toxic shit. You want to get the best quality you can so you know the fat is as clean as it can be because... When you're looking at an animal, the toxic and the same as us, the toxins store in the fat. So if it's toxic, 
the fatty like the fatty bits on the animal are going to be toxic so the fat holds all the minerals and also all the toxins so you want highly mineralized animals outdoor grass fed all of this kind of stuff with as little amount of toxins as you can possibly get so that's why you need to do a bit of research on where you're getting your meat from right um rice yep yeah, done that and uh, potatoes yeah we've done that as well so all of the above foods will uh, also cause inflammation in the gut so it's not just about pulling minerals out of the bones it's about causing inflammation as well and what you start to realize is if your blood sugar level goes through the roof your body will pull calcium from the bones to neutralize your blood sugar levels and then it doesn't know how to put it back in so now you've got free calcium which you end up peeing out or it ends up in your joints or your arteries or whatever and then you've got things like acidic you know like having an acidic mouth acidic environment your teeth become more porous so you're pulling minerals out again you can also use that to put minerals back in uh, but your body will always try to find like homeostasis through pulling out you know minerals from the bones regulating everything in the blood and then you need to send signals to get that back in back in the blood uh, back in the bones right so now we're going to go into the diet musts i'm not going to talk about like everything I eat but these are the things so if you read the Western A Price work if you read the Ramel Nagel book how to heal tooth decay which I'd still recommend getting I'm paraphrasing a lot of this and I'm trying to simplify it but get that book I go back to it all the time a quality book so diet must vitamin A there's a lot of controversy around a lot of controversy around vitamin A I had um, Dr. Garrett Smith on talking about vitamin A and vitamin A toxicity. So I don't know about vitamin A in that sense. I'm just talking about what I did and what worked for me and what others talk about. So vitamin A. Vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is one of these master minerals that I was telling you about. It signals to the body to drive calcium back in the bone. So if you live in a place that has 5G, for instance... I'd be taking a lot of vitamin K2 because that calcium channel thing that I was telling you about and the free calcium in the body, K2 will send it, will send the calcium back in. So that's something I'd absolutely be taking. And you don't even have to take a supplement. Uh, you can eat like pungent cheeses, raw cheeses. Uh, one in particular would be Gouda. Gouda's massive, really high in um, vitamin K2. So I'll be, we have gouda all the time. I do raw breed. That's the one. I keep talking about it. I use it all the time. Love it. So phosphorus, what causes cavities essentially, in my opinion, is the mismatch of ca the calcium to the phosphorus ratio. So you want to ensure that you're getting the right levels of calcium and, and phosphorus. And your body will balance it out itself. So make sure you're eating the right foods. Potassium and obviously calcium. So master minerals is what I was talking about. So K2 is being one of them, by the way. Uh, magnesium, absolutely massive. Uh, nothing was really working for me until I started taking high doses of uh, magnesium. And I don't take... Well, I started with tablets, but they're rubbish, so I wouldn't even bother. Then I went on to the powder. Um, there's loads of different types. I I've taken all the different types. But then I decided to get into the oils. So I found the purest oil I could find for six months' worth. And I use this stuff a lot. I do 20 sprays in the morning. I do a few sprays after the gym. And then I do like 20 before bed. So I'm putting it on all, you know, all throughout the day. And I found six months worth to the level that I use it for the same cost, £25, that I was paying for the powder that was lasting me one month. So I've gone from a monthly cost of 25 quid to six months. Then I went one further and I actually started to make my own uh, magnesium so I found the purest flakes that I could find and I learned how to make it it's really easy and uh, bought these little glass bottles spray ones me and the missus have one each and we have like a big you know uh, bottle full of the oil that I've made up and I just fill it up and the last one I did it's lasted me over six months already and it cost me about four quid so unbelievable and it's so um, important it, it Taking magnesium changed my life in every way, not just for my bone health and my dental health, but my mental health and 
my sleep, everything, quality, I'd recommend it to anyone. Any sort of issue you've got, first thing I'd look into is am I magnesium deficient and get the oil, don't mess around and spray that stuff all over yourself all the time. Vitamin D, which is a hormone, um, people take vitamin D, I don't recommend that at all. Um, there's a lot of evidence that vitamin D, in terms of like the oil, is very toxic. And also there's loads of different types of vitamin D. So by taking one, D3, and then you get the sun, your body's all over the place. It's a hormone. Just get out in the sun as much as you can. And I've put in boron. I actually take borax, which a lot of people laugh about, and apparently it's a cleaning agent and all of this stuff. I've been taking borax for like a year and I've had no issues, and it's only made me stronger, fitter, my teeth stronger. Um, it also doubles the half-life of vitamin D. So vitamin D's half-life is, I think it's two months from memory. So it now becomes four months. So if you go away on holiday in September, that la or let's say, let's say October, that last bit of sun before the winter, October, November, December, you're done. Your vitamin C is drained, done. It's a fat-soluble hormone or vitamin, um, which means unlike water-soluble, which you can pee out if you have too much of, which you can actually do with uh, borax, by the way, or boron. If, if you've got too much, you uh, predominantly you pee a lot of it out. Vitamin D will store in the body. And you could double the half-life. So you go away in October, get loads of vitamin D, now you're talking November, December, January, February. You've only got a month until the sun's back out again. You could even get a vitamin D lamp, a spurty lamp. Or you could even take a bit of vitamin D for one month. I don't know. I'm thinking about doing it myself. I don't know. This winter's been cold and dark. And I'm getting fed up with it. So I'm thinking, can I get a bit of vitamin D from somewhere? You can't get a lot of it in food. Lard, maybe. Um, pork you know outdoor bread pork um, mushrooms leave your mushrooms outside but there's no sun in the UK so it's, it's nearly impossible so I was even looking at mealworms worms mealworms if um, grown I guess under a vitamin D light or lamp they are very high in vitamin D I, I haven't bought them and I haven't eaten them I thought about it but I might look into a reptile lamp as well and just use that, you know, and, and um, try and up my vitamin D that way. So, yeah, organ meats. Uh, don't tell Dr. Garrett Smith, but I did have a lot of organ meats and it really did help. Especially if you're depleted, you know. Would, do I have them a lot anymore? Not really. Um, get Just get the cleanest. The cleanest you can get. Don't get some buki asda liver. Get grass fed the best you can. If you're gonna do it, get the best you can. Make a little pate, put it on a sour on some sourdough bread, bit of grass fed butter, boom. Vitamin A central. Um kidney, liver, brain, heart, yeah. Bone broth. Again, if it's not from clean, grass fed cows, the bone can store loads of issues, you know, loads of um toxins and heavy metals and things like this as well. So be careful, but Bone broth, I had loads of bone broth. I did it all the time. I got pretty good at making it, actually. I have got some decent recipes. It's really simple. I make loads. And um, me and the missus have it all the time. And it will really help you with your gut as well. It will heal your gut. So again, going back to the gut thing. Red meat, loads of it. Beef, lamb, pork. Um, everyone talks about pork. It's not kosher. It's dirty. But look at Hong Kong. I just look at Hong Kong, I'm like... Their average lifespan's like fucking 88 or whatever. And then you look at countries that don't eat pork, like India, and they're dying at 60. So I feel great when I eat pork, fatty pork. I love it. Uh, lamb's the one for me. Lamb's clean. It's expensive, but it's the best. So we have a lot of lamb. Free, I'd say three times a week. Mince meat every day. Good quality. Uh, eggs, the best you can get. Farm-bought eggs. I don't mess around with a supermarket. I go to the farm. I buy trays of them. I buy like four trays of 30. And I'll buy that. It'll last me like three or four weeks. And then I'll go back and I'll do it again. Load up on them. 
Um, just buy them in bulk. Raw milk. Kind of raw milk. I, I, I drink loads of it. I've been drinking it for four... I think four, maybe even five years now. Religiously, like daily. I make raw milk, milk, uh, raw milk kefir. Um, I used to get raw cream, but they've stopped doing it. I've actually got two raw dairies within nine miles of my house. Both of them stopped doing the raw cream because raw milk's become so popular. When I started, no one cared. Now, I've got to call up in advance. Save four litres for me. I'll be there Saturday. Um, it's just become so popular. So raw milk, again, love it. It's brilliant. I digest it so well. I, I've used it for a long time. I love it. Um, good quality cream. If you can't get raw cream, get your best quality, you know, uh, clotted cream, your best quality you can get. And we use that a lot. We cook with it a lot. And I put it in my coffees. I love it. So uh, kefir, yeah, probiotics. So ideally make your own with raw milk if you can. But definitely make your own kefir. The store stuff is, it doesn't taste anything like it. So it makes you think, what the hell is in it? Raw cheeses I spoke about, grass-fed butter. Um, even better if it's raw, obviously. But yeah, we do as many raw cheeses or good quality Jersey cow, you know, yellow cheeses. So we, we do that a lot. Um, loads of fat, avocado, full of fat, good quality fats, uh, loads of animal fats, tallow, um, lard, extra virgin olive oil. You've got to be careful with olive oil. You want it in a dark bottle. You want to make sure it comes from one source. Ideally with a QR code so you can check where it comes from and it's one farm in like Spain or Italy and it's organic and it's clean. Um, Grass-fed butter, we used to get raw, but we can't get that again. Raw milk's become so popular, it doesn't pay to make raw uh, cream and raw butter anymore. So I used to buy raw cream and I used to make my own butter and it was like the thickest, yellowest stuff you'll ever have. It was unreal, it was like nothing you'd ever get. But I can't get hold of it anymore. So we uh, we just buy the best quality we can buy. The more yellow, I'll open it up. The more yellow, the better for me. Um, so ghee as well, like I said. Coconut oil, duck fat. And then the last thing, duck eggs, loads of duck eggs, high in vitamin D. Generally speaking, ducks are kept outside. They're not co cooped up in some pen and manipulated and, you know, modified like a lot of chickens are in their coops. Ducks are left alone. And they are, they are, they are eating off pasture and, yeah, we uh, a lot of duck eggs as well. Right, so after diet, if you remember I was talking earlier in the video about the acid and bacteria theory. So, I focus more on the diet. I do all the things that I'm about to tell you, but I'm wary of the bacteria side of things. Do I believe the conventional reason or reasoning for cavities? No. But I will be careful of how acidic my mouth is because your teeth are more likely to demineralize when they are in an acidic environment because it makes your teeth more porous. Also, obviously, you want to be you want your mouth to be as clean as possible. So the acidity the, the acidity of your mouth shouldn't drop between uh, below. 5.5 so I don't measure that but I just make sure after I, I alkalize my mouth as soon as I possibly can so the ways that I alkalize my mouth I Swiss um, salt so I use Celtic sea salt so I sweat a little bit in my water or even just water if you're you know in a situation where you don't have access to this so if you're out and about and you eat something buy a bottle of water and just give it a good old Swiss so magnesium oil, I use that. Four to five sprays in the mouth straight after eating. Give it a little swiss and then spit it out. I use xylitol chewing gum. Uh, this also kills Streptococcus mutans and raises the pH. I um, So xylitol, what it does essentially is it's like an artificial sugar. And it as long as there's no traces of sugar in your mouth, the bacteria will try to 
consume or eat the sugar. And if it's xylitol instead of sugar, it, suffoc it suffocates the bacteria. So if I ever eat anything sugary, and like I said, I try not to eat sugar, but if I do, I'll have a good old go in one session. So I might once a week just pig out. I'll eat my dinner and ideally less than that. <clears throat> but once a week, twice a week, uh, sorry, twice a month or whatever, every couple of weeks, I'll just go mad on the sugar. I'll just eat loads in one go. Five cookies, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. And I just get it done in one go. And then I try to do everything I can to lower my blood sugar levels again. Xylitol chewing gum. Give it a good old swish with magnesium. So if there is any calcium in the blood, you know, trying to lower my blood sugar levels, it can drive it back in the bones. So I try to mitigate it the best I can. Um, and xyl xylitol chewing gum I use probably daily. After a coffee, I'll, I'll have it. If I don't have magnesium oil or I don't have, you know, the other stuff. Um, if we're out, if we go out and we grab a coffee or we grab some lunch or something, then I'll have a chewing gum straight after I eat. Coconut oil pulling is good, but there's no minerals in it at all. And it's quite mild. So I add two drops of um, oregano or oregano, if you're American. Two drops is quite hot, so be careful. Get it on a spoon, coconut oil, two drops, get it in the mouth. And swish it quickly because that, that shit will burn. It's so powerful. Black seed oil, I use it daily. I uh, After my first uh, coffee at work in the morning, I will, obviously my mouth's quite clean. I brush my teeth not long before that. So I'll swish black seed oil for like two minutes. Again, it's quite spicy. It's very strong. Swish it, gurgle it, back of my throat, swallow it, done. So that's what I do after the first coffee of the day. Uh, no, first coffee is in the morning, then I have my breakfast, whatever. Um, first coffee at work, and predominantly my last coffee. I tend to only try and have one while I'm at work. But anyway, I do my, my um, black seed oil done. So mouth's alkaline, clean, you know, got all the goodness, done. Um, tongue scraping, I do that every morning and every night. So much shit stays on the tongue. You brush your teeth, but you don't clean your tongue and everything that's in the mouth is sort of still there. So scraping the tongue has been brilliant. You can use a copper scraper, that going to be the best. I just use a little plastic thing and it's great. I use it because it's easier. The copper one's annoying. It's massive and I've got to use two hands. I just use this little plastic one, do it, give it a rinse, put it away. Um, I tape my mouth at night because I breathe from my mouth. I wake up, my mouth is dry. Acidic environment, full of bacteria, smelly breath, all of that stuff. I, uh, mouth, I mouth tape, I wake up, my breath doesn't smell at all, my mouth's not dry. I sleep better. I mean, I'd look into mouth taping and nasal breathing. It's, it, again, it would change your life, it's incredible. I swear by it. But that's key for your oral health as well. So you'll be hard pushed to get new cavities when you're also mouth taping at night. So that's a massive one. We do it every night. It took me months to talk my, my missus into it. She didn't want to know. Every night now, she's like, have you got the tape? <laughs> she loves it. We've been doing it for like probably two years I've been doing it. She's been doing it for like a year and a half or whatever it is. Um, yeah, we love it. We take it everywhere we go. On holiday, you know, all of it. The only time I didn't do it was when I slept on a plane because I thought, come on, man. I'm already wearing my blue blocking glasses looking like a freak. The last thing I want to do is that as well. That'll, yeah, that'll, uh, that'll freak people out. So I cut out fluoride toothpaste. Uh, some people in like the holistic like dentistry industry say, you know, still believe in fluoride. But the thing is with fluoride is... It completely nukes your mouth. Same as like um, these uh, mouthwashes. I wouldn't have it anywhere near me. And I use, um, we use xylitol toothpaste and hypoxia appetite. So these are the two that we use. We don't use fluoride. A lot of people stop using fluoride and then they start using all this herbal stuff that doesn't have anything good in it. And they end up with cavities again. You know, 
So you need something that is going to be beneficial in terms of remineralizing your teeth as well. Don't just cut fluoride out. Look into what you should use as a, you know, as a substitute essentially. Uh, and yeah, no mouthwash. So only oils. So we're going to look at Streptococcus mutans and how you can kill the little mutants. And these little guys are apparently what cause cavities. So why do I take this seriously? Because I don't know. Like I said, I've, I've made it clear. But I'm, I just ensure that if there's bacteria, I want to nuke it. That's all I know. So... What do we use first? We use black seed oil. That is potentially one of the best things you can do to, it helps you remineralize, alkalizes the mouth, cleans the mouth out, way better than coconut oil, and it kills the little mutants. Oregano oil, like I said, I put that in my coconut oil. When I had the cavity, I was flossing it in between the two teeth where the cavity was and it was spicy as hell so be careful so I'd, I'd floss it in there I'd give it as long as I can before I'm in agony and then I'd bang in some coconut oil and um, what was that and uh, I would uh, give it a little swiss around so I would do that hydrogen peroxide 6% which is food grade or H2O2 um, H2O2 is like pure oxygen essentially and I would put that on the cavity straight away if you have a cavity get that on there if it hurts then the cavity is deep mine didn't hurt but I'd get that on there as regularly as I um, as I possibly could uh, the black walnut hole the black walnut hole kills all parasites bacteria everything if you ever look into holder clock you'll know about the black walnut hole and it's really high in calcium and all the good minerals and vitamins that you need. So swishing that, I do it all the time. If I go on holiday to mainly a tropical place, I will take as many capsules as I need per day. And I'll swish it and I'll swallow it. And um, to ensure I don't get any parasites while I'm traveling as well. Because you end up getting parasites, you end up feeding the parasites rather than feeding yourself minerals. They will live on the minerals that you're trying to get in your gut. I should have mentioned that earlier, but you need to look into parasites as well. If you're riddled with parasites and you're trying to do all these things, it'll probably still work, but it won't be as effective. So make sure you nuke out those parasites. Get rid of all of it, all your candida, all of that stuff. It's living on the toxins in your gut. So you want to be trying to become, you clean yourself out, basically, and you'll absorb these things better. So black walnut hole is good. Um, it's been proven to help re grow enamel so i use it it's great wheatgrass we use wheatgrass every day and by the way i do all these things every day by the way i know it's a bit excessive but now it's a habit and it, i've been doing it for a long time and i don't ever want a cavity ever again not only am i trying to reverse any issue i've got i don't want any further issues and i know how to do this now so i stick with it and uh last time i went to the dentist again a couple of weeks ago she was well impressed and I didn't have any bad news. I used to, have, every time I went, I was like, oh, I hate the dentist because every time I go, I've got a new thing. Now it's like, teeth are great. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Do you want to know how? Nah. All oh, right, okay. I'll make a YouTube video about it then. Maybe someone will care. Anyway, wheatgrass is brilliant. Alkalizes the mouth, pulls out toxins. Amazing for your gums. Any issues with your gums, be, be, be doing uh, wheatgrass. And it's full of minerals. As well, it's got everything that you need. So, I use wheatgrass. I do a little, I've got an espresso cup. Me and the missus again, she's on it. She, she's, um, she reversed two small cavities as well, following me, by the way. She's not as uh, religious on it as me. She's like, I'll just get the filling. I'm like, I will never get another filling. So it's very different, but she reversed two, but we're quite small, just following what I'm doing. So, the wheatgrass, what you want to do, this is what I do. I have a little espresso cup, teaspoon, put it in there, mix it with water, fill it to the top, drink half of it, get the minerals in, it's quite good for you. And um, I uh, then will um, 
swish the rest of it and spit it out. So I do it after dinner when my teeth are porous because I've just eaten and um, <clears throat> my teeth are acidic, my mouth's acidic. So immediately it uh, alkalizes the mouth and uh, gets full of goodness. Xylitol toothpaste, already spoke about that one. So remineralization hacks. So these are the little things that I do every day. And I normally do it after I eat. So magnesium oil, spoke about it loads, drives calcium back into the bones. This is a little uh, extra, which I only found out about about a year ago. And I've been doing it religiously. So I made up a little, um, a couple of little bottles of DMSO. So you want the 99% food grade, pure as you can get. Mix it half DMSO, half magnesium. And then I've done another one, half um, H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, and half DMSO. I also use DMSO for loads of stuff. I use it on my body all the time, loads of different things, but let's stick to the teeth. With the teeth, if you're driving it into the tooth, because it... What DMSO does is it's transdermal. So as soon as it goes on the body, it goes all over the body. It can fix all sorts of problems. You don't have to put it specifically, topically on a specific area to fix the area. It sort of goes around the body looking for things to fix. And it also makes your, it makes everything more porous. So if you've got, if you put it on your skin and then you rub magnesium on your skin, it will drive the, mag the magnesium deeper into the cell. So I put it on the tooth where the cavity was with magnesium and also sometimes with H2O2. So put it in the mouth, keep it in my mouth as long as I can on the tooth specifically. I don't swish it all around. I try not to because I have a couple of fillings and I don't really want to drive the toxins from the fillings into my bloodstream. But I'm going to try and avoid that the best I can, even though DMSO will probably keep hold of those toxins and drive it through the body and back out. But I put it on the, the tooth specifically I leave it in there as long as I can, spit it out, and then I'll use pearl powder. Little bit, eighth of a teaspoon, put it in my mouth, rub it straight on the tooth. I leave it on there as long as I possibly can. Four, five, six minutes, I don't know, until my saliva starts to mix it all around, and then I swish it all around my mouth, and then I swallow it. I only swallow it if I've used the DMSO and the magnesium, because I'm cool with magnesium, swallowing magnesium. The H2O2, if I use it that day, then I will spit out the pearl powder because I don't want the H2O2. I don't want to swallow it. So that's what I do with that. Pearl powder, I use it all the time. I put it in my coffee. I swiss it in my mouth. Sometimes I do it just after I eat instead of the other stuff. But mainly, I do it with a DMSO. I drive that shit deep. Look into pearl powder. It's like the perfect balance of minerals in nature that matches our teeth. So pearl powder is great, I use it all the time. Uh, and I didn't use DMSO, no that's not right, I didn't use pearl powder before healing my cavity by the way, I did that without pearl powder. Now I'm smashing the pearl powder as well. So I think I'm even more insured. Um, wheatgrass also spoke about that and uh, toothpaste wise, hydroxyapatite toothpaste. So hydroxyapatite is the main compound found in your enamel. So if you look into hydroxyapatite, it's, what you, it's, it's predominantly what your enamel is made out of. So what I do with that is I brush my teeth twice a day with it and I leave it on my teeth as long as I can. I was using one that had, I think it was glycerine in it, and glycerine blocks the absorption of minerals. So I stopped using that, and I use one now that has xylitol and, uh, and um, yeah, hydroxyapatite as well. And it's been awesome. My teeth are great, honestly. They're, they've just improved no end. So getting rid of the glycerine, always look if there's glycerine, SLAs, all that kind of stuff. You want to get rid of all of it the best you can. 
Um, and then I use a, yeah, the, I didn't mention actually, the black walnut hull powder that I use. I get it in a capsule. It comes with clove and wormwood. So it's a free mix together, which is the Holder Clark special. And I use that for swissing and swallowing. And it's very powerful. It's very, very good. So, um, yeah, I've had good results with that. And like I said, if I go on holiday, I'll take it with me. Because I can't take all this stuff with me when I go away. And I will. I want to do this while I'm away. I want to do it all the time. I want to do it every day. Especially if you're out and you're eating seed oils and loads of shitty food. Sometimes I just enjoy myself. Like, I healed my cavity as well. And I did two weeks in Thailand. And what I took in Thailand, I mean, I ate loads of seed oils, obviously. And I ate out a lot. And I drank a lot. I don't drink anymore, but back then I did. So that was probably not great. But I took, I took a little mixture of borax. I took my black walnut hull. I took my magnesium oil and I swished it every day. I bought coconut oil out there and that's all I did. And then when I come home, I just went back to the routine. And during that period is the period where I reversed my cavity. And by the way, just, I wanna throw this out there as well. The cavity I had, which was above a filling, he said to me, I think you've had it for a long time and it's just not got any worse. So even though I was eating shit food, it took like two, two and a half years to go from not being there to getting to a point where he was like, okay, we need to look at this. Normally you're talking months. A cavity can run rampant. So I held it at bay, not even really trying, just FYI. And then, like I said, I sorted all of it out and I did it over a six month period and I was away for two weeks of it. And I was still drinking alcohol, only like once a week. When I was in Thailand, out of the two weeks, I probably drank eight times, eight days. So I no longer drink and I'm focusing on this. So I can only assume that it's getting better and better, but I know my teeth are getting better. I can feel it, it my, t my teeth feel amazing. So yeah, that is my, that's my protocol. That's what I do. And that's what I did, which helped me. And I kind of stick to it. I've not really come off of it because I want to make sure that when I go back to the dentist next time, I'm improving even more and more and more. And I'll now explain why I think I am prone to cavities. So... Firstly, I wasn't breastfed, I said that. Secondly, I did loads of juicing. That was an issue. That was an acute issue, clearly, because I went to the dentist and I had like five in one go. And my my dad's teeth are actually all right. He's not, he doesn't go dentist ever. And he's probably only had a couple of fillings in his life. I've had more than him and he's 20 years older than me. My mum's got loads of issues with her teeth. She always has, same as me. So I get it from, from her. And what I would say, so someone who's clearly become quite obsessed about this topic, and I've been in the, I've been to the burning gates of hell with this. I mean, I'm there at 25 with loads of cavities, you know, losing my mind, thinking, am I gonna be that guy at 40 with fucking teeth missing? And I've had a few issues, you know? I've had a, a tooth out, I've got a crown, now, because that fucking filling broke the tooth. And I've now realized that I can take control of this. So when people say to me, why are you so obsessed with it? Why are you so strict? I'm like, because I want to be in control. I, w I don't want to just leave it to fate and feel like I don't have any choice and I'm not in any sort of control. So that's why I do this and it's helped me and it's made me feel a lot better. It's also made me not feel like a victim because at one point I was well down in the dumps and I'm, I'm sure many, many people are. And there's not many options once you start losing your teeth. I mean, everything that you do that's not natural is toxic. Even dentures, toxic. 
if you're getting um, like implants, they're horrendous. Unless you get ceramic and it's expensive, it costs you like three, four grand a pop. How many teeth you got? Say if you've got five missing. I mean, that's a deposit on a mortgage, it's insane. And then you've got all this holistic space, these holistic dentists, oh yeah, we're here to help. You're, you're also robbing people because you charge 10 times what a normal dentist does and all you do is talk about how a normal dentist is scamming people and robbing people and taking their money. You're doing the same. Yeah, what you're offering is a slightly better solution. You go and get, what, veneers? What are they made out of? A load of toxins. You, fillings, all of them are toxic. Even the white ones. They're better, yeah, but they're still toxic. So I wish I knew this stuff years ago. If I knew this stuff years ago and the passion I feel for it, I probably would have become a dentist, to be honest. But I didn't. And, you know, I've now invested all this time for free and uh, help myself and hopefully this can help other people. But um, yeah, I'd say don't feel guilty. Don't, try not to let it bog you down. Listen to this, go away. Don't take what I'm saying for gospel. I've done this because I want to spread the word of what I've done, but also I want you to expand on this and figure it out for yourself. You have to figure it out for yourself. You can't just go to someone and get a fix. That's the problem. This is the problem with, well, they call it healthcare, but it's sick care. You go, you take a pill, oh, I'm better now, but you're not better. You're just suppressing the symptoms and they're going to come back worse. Or the issue you've got has not been fixed, it's just been kicked down the road. What you should be doing, in my opinion, this is what I do, is I take the lesson, I look into it, and I use it as an opportunity to grow and to learn and predominantly to learn about myself. So it's taken me on a journey. This is one hell of a journey I've been on with this and all of this information is years and years. It doesn't seem that, you might look at it and go, oh my God, it's a nightmare, it's so tricky and complex. Or you might look at it and think, oh, that's just basic. But it's taken me a long time. I've weaned out loads of stuff. There's loads of stuff I've tried, don't like it, don't think it works. But look at this, realize you're not alone. We've all had the issue, not all of us. Some people are lucky, most of us. And you can take control. And on that note, I wish you the best. If you have any questions at all, drop me a message. Please share this video, because it can help. Give it a like. I want this to go out there I want to spread the word. There's other videos similar to this, but I don't think they're as good as this. And I, I've proven this. This is this is proof. I've proved it. I'm not going to start sharing on my X-ray because I'm I'm a bit, you know, sensitive with that. I don't really want to share my X-rays on 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 the internet. If there's any doubters, I'll show you because I've shown it to dentists and I've, you know, I've had that conversation. But I'm not just going to put it on there. But take it from me it works and it worked unbelievably well and it's worked for so many other people what i found is a lot of people look into one or the other some people are like ah, diet yeah but use black seed oil use this use that swish this do this use this toothpaste i'm looking at the whole picture ramil nagel said he doesn't like xylitol and he also didn't mention any of these oils and he didn't mention any of the pearl powder he didn't mention any of that stuff DMSO, none of it. I know he knows about DMSO because he did mention it in an interview. I listened to all of his stuff so many times over. But this wasn't part of his protocol. I've added it all together because I think you need to look at it from a, a whole perspective. The other thing, I'm not going to go too much into this because I'm only going to talk about what I know. But I did an interview with a guy, Mike the Heal Your Gut guy. And another interview with a German New Medicine practitioner. And there's school of thought around cavities in German New Medicine. I don't know enough about that yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. But I do think stress and worry is a huge factor. And, I think, and, and when you are stressed and you're worried and you're anxious, or you're living in like, you know... A toxic environment that could be physically moldy house it could be you know a toxic relationship it could be anything 
toxicity doesn't just have to be a physical thing. It could be internal as well. You need to figure that one out and sort that out because that will hold you back massively in your, you know, in your, your, your health and growing as a person. So that's, that's what I'm going to leave you on. Like I said, comment, share, like, all of that. Any questions, let me know. I haven't put references. I've mentioned the key people. There's, there's loads of other people where I've picked up this information, but I haven't shared it all because that's long. I didn't want to do it. I, this video is already quite long, so I wanted to just give you the juice. And um, once you start exploring all of these things, you'll find people that are talking about it. It's not just me. None of this is just me. This is all information that other people talk about, and I've just put it all into one place. The only thing that's me is that I helped myself and I've put all of these words on slides and presented it to you. The rest of it is out there. And it's all, I think, solid information that people are using. And it's working. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed.